In my last progress video, I got a ton of comments asking for a corrupt gauntlet guide and to show how I do it, so here I am to deliver. Keep in mind, this is not going to be the efficient way to do CG. This is just what's been working for me to get consistent kills, uh, using up all the time to get your weapons, armor, and a full inventory of food. If you are looking for an in-depth guide with advanced tips and tricks such as using redemption or the 5 to 1 method, this guide is not for you. This is for people that are struggling with corrupt gauntlet, so I'll be going by the assumption that you've done the regular gauntlet and that I don't need to explain the very basics, such as what the singing bowl is or what a weapon frame is. With that said, I'll put timestamps in the description and I hope this video helps you out in one way or another. First thing we're going to go over is plugins. I use Runelite, which has been approved by Jagex, and every plugin, including those from the plugin hub, are allowed. The plugin hub can be found on the bottom of the plugins list. Now now here's the plugins I recommend. The most important one is the Hunlift Helper, and I'll admit I would not be able to do a single gauntlet without it, and I'll show how it actually works during the Hunlift fight. By the way, it's not actually supposed to be pronounced Hunlift, I don't think, it's more like Hunyef? Wait, Hinhlep? Hinhlep? What? It, frick you, it, it's a made up word in a video game, frick off. Anyways, other useful plugins are the Tile Indicators plugin, which you can use to mark the true tile your character is on, even if your character doesn't visually appear there. The Vertical Camera option within the Camera plugin might not be necessarily useful just for Gauntlet specifically, but I turned it on like a year ago and just left it on because I found it useful for bossing and skilling in general. With the NPC Indicators plugin enabled, you can shift right click to highlight any NPC. I personally use the highlight tile option within the plugin as well, and it's really nice for a lot of bosses and especially for Hunlift because it makes it clear how close you can get without being stomped. I like using the Gauntlet minimap plugin which highlights everything on the minimap which I find useful. And you can just search Gauntlet in the plugin hub and try out the others and see if any of them work for you, but these are just all the main important ones that I use. You want your ping to be as low as possible, so if you don't know about this already, go to the world switcher plugin and you can sort by lowest ping and then just pick any of the worlds with the lowest ping. As for the requirements, technically the only requirement is Song of the Elves, but if you're learning Gauntlet, and especially if you plan to grind it, you'll probably want at least base 85s for the combat related skills and 70 prayer with piety. Of course, the higher stats the better, and if you have Augury and especially Rigor unlocked, that helps too. But if you're an Iron Man, you're probably stuck in the same loop I'm in, where I want a Dex to help with Gauntlet, but I want the Bow to help with Raids, and well, you gotta pick somewhere to start with. Now, now let's jump into a full run through of the gauntlet. In my head, I kind of split up the resource collection into two sections. The first section is getting the armor, one tier 2 weapon, and a bit of food. And the second part is hunting for two tier 3 upgrades and filling up the inventory with food and potions. I'm going to pause right here to show you my ideal run for part 1 to collect the resources. I start by going to one of the rooms on either side of the starting room, wherever I'm closest to really. And then I make my way to the outer edge and kind of zigzag my way through this whole area and then eventually work my way back to the starting room. And if it's not looking like I'm going to have enough resources, then I'll search other close by rooms too. Which leads to the next question. How many resources do I go for? Well for me, I go for the tier 1 armor, 3 potions, and a tier 2 weapon at this point. Which means I do not go back to the starting room until I have the following at minimum. 3 wood, 3 ore, 3 wool, 1 weapon frame, 8 fish, and 230 crystal shards. I work my way around the path I showed, collecting all these resources. And there's a few extras you can collect too, if you happen to see them, which is the potion stuff. And that is 3 of the Grim Leafs and 30 extra crystal shards, or 260 crystal shards in total. This will save you a bit of time later, but you don't need to go out of the way for it right now because you don't need to mix the potions in the starting room. Some people just make 2 potions in their runs, but I make 3 because that would be 9 doses, which means I have 2 full potions for the Hunla fight, and I have an extra dose to use for when I'm running around collecting the food and gear. I have my quick prayer set to Pray Melee and Piety, which I use for killing the normal monsters in the gauntlet. You can see me one tick flicking to save prayer, which is totally not necessary. You could just lazy flick Piety or just not even use it. But if you want to get better at the game, then Gauntlet is a good place to learn, I'm just saying. The little bar going across my prayer orb is the prayer plugin, and each bar that moves across is one game tick. The three middle rooms of the outer layer are where the demi bosses spawn, 
If I do happen to see any of them right now, I make a mental note of it because that's the tier 2 weapon I'm going to make when I go back to the starting room. In this case, it's a bear, so I know I'll be making a halberd. It's a bit easier to use the bow and the staff since you can stand anywhere in the room to attack the boss instead of being forced to be within two tiles. And honestly, like half the time, even when I see a bear, I do try to go a bit extra out of the way to try to not end up with a halberd, but it's not a big deal if you do. But for this run, I'm just going to run with the halberd to make it a little bit more challenging on myself and to highlight better how I see the boss as more of a movement puzzle than anything else. We're back to the starting room, so I'm going to make the tier 2 weapon, the three pieces of the armor set, and three vials. And I know it looks like I'm doing this really fast, but you just build up the muscle memory and you don't have to think about it eventually. As I run over to the water pump, I'm just organizing my inventory. I'm dropping the extra tools I should have dropped earlier, equipping the armor, crushing 30 shards because I did end up with over 260. And as soon as you crush 30 shards, which I could have done earlier, Player, you can drop the pestle and mortar. With menu entry swapper on runelight enabled, you can right click the inventory icon to set left click drop for certain items, which is useful for the raw fish and tools since you'll probably never be clicking them for any other reason. I've used the object markers plugin to shift right click highlight the singing bowl. And I know I didn't mention these plugins at the start, which is because they're really not that important, but I figured I should at least mention them. I fill up the vials and then drop 8 fish on the ground. And you could get even more than 8 fish at the start too, by the way, just depending on how many grim leaves you find on your path. But with that said, we are done with part 1, so let's move on to part 2 of the run. Part 2 is going to be getting 2 tier 3 weapon pieces, finishing and decanting your potions, and filling up the rest of your inventory with food. For this whole section, I stop at any fishing spots along the way to where I'm going, but the first destination is back to the bear since I already know where it is. As I'm running around for this part, I make the potions as I'm running and I'm not just standing around idling. As you can see, I still need two more grim leaves, but I should just get those passively from running around finding the other demi boss, or you could even get it as a drop from the demi bosses. From here, there's not really a specific path I take, just whatever side I'm closer to is the way I go. I'm just kind of meandering through, working my way towards the next potential rooms that could have demi bosses. I try to light up all the rooms I run by, even if it's not completely on the path to where exactly I want to go, because the sooner I get a bunch of fish, the less I'll have to worry about running out of time. If you run into a repeat of a demi boss, but you already have that upgrade, like if I found a bear again, then you won't get a repeat of what you got already, so at this point, a bear would give me either an orb or a bowstring. I killed the second demi boss, and now it looks like all I need is more fish. You also only need one weapon frame at this point to create the second weapon. You'll have more than enough shards unless you got a bit unlucky and you have two tier 3 upgrades that aren't for the weapon that you have at this point. And if that's the case, you'll need two weapon frames and you'll need 160 shards. And you might even have to go a bit out of the way to get your shards stack up, but that rarely happens. When your inventory is starting to get full of fish, you can count the number of red items and space in your inventory. And as long as it's not more than like eight or nine, then you're all set and you can use the teleport seed that you're given at the start to teleport back to the main room. You're going to make the two tier three weapons now, but if you're new to Gauntlet, make sure you create the right weapon here. Otherwise, you could potentially potentially throw the whole run if you click the wrong weapon and you're low on time. It's definitely worth the few extra seconds to double check to make sure that you're making the correct one. You pick up the extra fish to fill up your inventory, eat some fish if you took some damage during the run, and by the end, ideally, I want my inventory to look like this. I have my second weapon, two potions, and a full inventory of food. And as long as that's all good, then it is time to head into the final boss fight. And by the way, if you ever go into the boss room without cooking your food, that means it's time for bed, or at least time for a break. It's time to fight Hunleth, and the whole time I'm doing Gauntlet, I always leave the Hunleth helper plugin open, so when I get to the final room, I'm not scrambling to open it back up. I would not be able to do Gauntlet without this plugin, so for me, this is by far the most important one. I go into the room praying range, because Hunleth always starts with range, and then my combat boosting prayer. As soon as you see the damage splat hit you, that's when you click start on the plugin. It doesn't have to be exact, take perfect timing, and this isn't anything fancy either. It's literally just a 12 second timer with a nice purple Australian bloke who alternates between telling you to switch to range and mage. 2. 1. Range.
If you zone out and forget to start the plugin, just count four of Hunlift's attacks, it'll do an animation signifying that it's switching styles, and then you can click Start Mage as soon as the Mage attack splat appears. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you get trampled during the kill, then you click I got trampled, and unless you have really unlucky timing with it, Usually the plugin is back on time perfectly. If you didn't get this already, Hunlift switches its attack style every 4 hits, which is how often you need to switch your prayers, and then for every 6 hits you do, Hunlift switches its own prayer to whatever the last hit you used on it was. Don't worry about counting your own hits though, it's pretty obvious when you need to switch weapons and that would just be a pretty unnecessary distraction. If you do keep hitting with the wrong weapon, nothing bad happens, it's just you're only going to hit 0. Hunlift has 1000 health and each one third is kind of like a different phase, like phase Phase 2 starts at 666 health, and Phase 3 starts at 333 health. The two things that change between the phases are, the tiles on the ground have different patterns and activate faster the further you are into the fight, and the number of tornadoes go from 2 to 3 to 4. Tornadoes can be deceiving because sometimes they'll pile on each other and it might just look like one, but it's actually four and they all hit you at once and it's just insta-death in one game tick. Most of you probably don't struggle with the first phase, a lot of you probably don't struggle with the second phase even, but the third phase is what gets most people that are struggling with Gauntlet. So here's my tips to help. First thing, which isn't just true for Gauntlet, but helps me with all kinds of PVM, is changing my mind mindset to see the game as a puzzle. And this is going to be like really hard for me to explain, but instead of just seeing the fight as your guy running around hitting the boss, it helps to have an analytical mindset. It's going to be so hard to explain this because it's not something that just clicks, it's like knowledge that builds up over time. But you can start by noticing patterns. For example, you might notice you can hit from one side of the room, start running to the other side, do a hit in the middle pretty much without stopping, and then continue on and do another hit once you reach the other side. And using that knowledge, you can conclude that you can do the same thing when the tornadoes are out by running in a square because you know you can run halfway across the room without them reaching you. I think this older clip gives a good example of analytical movement with a huge help from the Tile Indicators plugin with the True Tile feature enabled to show exactly where I actually am. To me, this is just like a puzzle and I feel like it's really all about mastering how movement works. Here's another example of understanding movement, which is that the game ignores in-between tiles when you're running. So if you're running two tiles away, the game never saw me right here as being under Hunliff, so there's never a chance of me being stomped. Quick note, when you enter the room, try not to do it when Hunliff is in the middle because it makes the third phase a lot more annoying like this. Back to the actual fight though, I know this is so typical to say, but like you really learn by just doing it and doing it more and more. But you have to actually want to learn. Like sure you could just get complacent with your tier 2 armor and have really slow kills, but at the end of the day, the way to improve is by pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and learning new mechanics. I know this is all a lot easier said than done, especially when you have to focus on running around, eating, switching weapons, switching prayers, turning your prayers on when they get disabled, etc. Which leads me into my next point. F keys. If you don't have F keys set up, go into your settings, type in keybinds, and set those up to what works for you. Or you could just pause and copy mine. If you haven't been using F keys, then today is the first day of the rest of your life, my friend, because I will no longer allow you to manually click on your inventory, prayer, or spellbook icon in any boss fight ever again. Hope this helps. Another huge piece of advice, which applies to the whole fight, but especially to the last phase, is don't try to be a hero. And what I mean by that is don't worry about hitting the boss when the tornadoes are out. Just focus on running and correctly pathing your character. Of course, you still need to eat and switch prayers, but try to focus as much as you can on running around, staying out of the path of the tornadoes. A more specific tip I have is when to eat food. If you're comfortable with running around when the tornadoes are out, but not comfortable enough to hit the boss at the same time, then that's the time you should try to be eating food, because you're not DPSing anyways, so you wouldn't be wasting any extra time. Another situation you could wait for to eat your food is if you need to hit with the halberd, but you're running the other way from the boss, so you wouldn't be able to hit the boss anyway, so you may as well eat. I let my health get pretty low throughout the fight sometimes, but if you're learning, maybe don't let it get that low where you're one or two auto attacks away from dying. But like I've been saying, it's all just gradual improvement, and by just fighting the boss and trying to get better, you won't even notice yourself improving over time. 
and it sounds bad. You will get better over time, but you won't notice it. I will warn you, you will die a lot, or you probably know this already, you will die a lot learning CG. It might be dozens or like 50 plus attempts before you even get your first kill. It has a very steep learning curve, but I promise you are not alone. And everyone who learned this boss at one point went through a very similar process that you're going through. A bunch of you asked in my last video to show how I do my CG runs, and that's how I do them. I've never made tier 2 armor, so I can't make a guide on it, but there are plenty of tier 2 specific guides on YouTube you could easily find. Whether you want to spend more time making armor and less time making food, or less time making armor and more time making food, at the end of the day, it comes down to how good you are at pathing your character through the puzzle with the bit of perf switching thrown in. If there is any important info I forgot to mention, then I'll add it to the description, so make sure to check there. And if you have any questions, then feel free to leave a comment, and either me or someone else watching the video, I'm sure, will try to help you out. This was my first time making a guide in years. Normally, I just make Iron Man progress videos, but I hope this video helped you in one way or another, or at least I hope you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.